On the 4th of July, 1776, a declaration of independence was read and unanimously accepted by the Congress of the American colonies. A year later, the British army surrendered to the American-French alliance. Those still loyal to the British crown were forced by fines and harassment to flee, and many moved into the safety of Canada. But another exodus was taking place across the Atlantic. After the fatal attempt by Bonnie Prince Charles Stuart to come into his own as king, the Scottish Highlands had felt the full blast of revenge and reprisal, and now they suffered further deprivations. Whole clans were driven out to make way for sheep. The government was indifferent, if not positively instrumental in making this possible. Leaving their crofts and their hearts behind, the Highlanders sailed for the terrible unknown in Canadian America. I have my orders. Will you move, man? No, nah, never. Ah, but you must. It's the will of the laird. No Lowlander nor Sassenach will make me. I am neither, as you well know, Macamney. And the more shame on you, Factor Morrison, but your master is. What kind of a laird would put away his ain clan folk? We were on this land for more years than you can count. I will not go now. The laird wants you off this land. It's his land. It's his right. He wants us off and the sheep on. Nobody has the right to drive us from our own fields. No, no, no. Have you forgotten Culloden Moor so soon? Do you want more Scots blood spilt here today? What Cumberland and the English couldn't do at Culloden, you'll not do here. This land is ours. Lairds or no lairds, sheep or no sheep, we'll fight for it. Stop no. it, somebody. We'll Don't die it. for it. Stop him. Fire! Hey there. Shall I send for the clergy? Am I dying then? Wish now you're no dying, you'll last us out. I'm speaking to my son. Aye, Father. Dying. Promise me you'll bury me here, on this land. No matter what happens this night, on my land. I promise, Father. We fought and lost. Sometimes that's the last thing a man can do, to fight and lose. They left the field blooded, arms dangling, legs broken, spades and shovels against musket and sword. And we did what we could. Smashed heads, cracked ribs, pounded them up the ass. We fought hard. It's not fair. We should have had guns too. It's not fair. It was us that got kicked up the ass, not them. Us. Donald, Donald, they'll be here soon. They're not a mile away. They'll be here soon. The valley is crowded now with sounds of hell. Women weeping, children crying, dogs barking. And a stench. Smell it. Everything's burning. Every hut, every shelter, every roof, every wall. One hour's warning. Then the flames. You're a brave man to come to this house. I am parched. Do you have water? Are there no Christians here? No, only my camis. It is you that is the brave man, but a fool. 
Is that all you have to drink? The downfall of the nation. The scourge of Scotland, they call this. It takes the mind of an Englishman to make whiskey illegal. Will you have a drink? Will any of you drink with me? You stand on this hill behind this hut. You can see the fires for ten miles. Fires that you started. Men that yesterday were working in the field are today wandering in the woods. Their senses turned loose from their skulls by what they've seen this day. We'll not drink with you. It is God's will. Why is it always people like you that know God's will? It is God's will we obey those he has placed above us. If the sheriff substitute commands this land to be cleared, I clear it. Can we leave in the morning? One hour. This place will be ablaze in one hour. He'll die if we move him. He'll die anyway. One hour. At least I won't have to look upon you like any more. <laughs> I said you are a brave man. Here, take the bottle. So that they'll know it's a Highlander coming. They'll not be able to tell unless you stab him. <laughs> Do you think they'll have whiskey in hell? He should have a priest. He hated them. Somebody must say something. You fought at Culloden as a lad. The clan chiefs wanted us then. They needed men. Men were armies, men were strength, men meant pride. No. It's all changed. The chiefs have ordered us removed from their lands. They don't need men, they need wool for the English factories. Wool means money, that's their new pride, money. The values change. But one thing will never change. My heart will always be here in the Highlands because this is the land where you will always be. Right, Fenner. For a moment, just for a moment. This cat jumped out of the fire screeching. The laird's men grabbed it and threw it back into the burning crop. Again and again, back into the fire, until it died there. Oh, I'm tired. I'm carrying more than you. You're not. But I'll take some of that timber off you. We can of throw it away. Why not? Mother says we need it to build our new huts. Where are we going? Down to the sea. You cannot have forgotten already. To build new houses by the sea. Oh, yes, the factor said. You can no longer harvest the land. Now you must harvest the sea. How do I do that, Donald? How do we harvest the sea? The villages where we should live have not been built. The boats have not been launched. The nets have not been spun. We are expected to do all this. I cannot. I'm not a fisherman. I go down to the sea. Only to cross it. 
You shall take my family, my wife, my wife's mother, my sons, my daughter, to New Scotland. I am now a fisherman. Can we join you in New Scotland? Can we go with you? No, each man must decide for himself. Each family must decide. Go or to stay. There can be no forcing. We know the hell that waits for us here. The hell that waits for us over the seas may make this hell seem a small one. You remember that. Remember and decide. <laughs> MacDonald. Aye. MacPhail, Duncan. Aye. MacPhail, Fergus. Aye. Widow Chisholm. No, no. I'm our all. Mother! Mother! Aye. McGregor, I am no fisherman, I. Mackay, John. <laughs> I take it that means I. Aye, sir. I'll pipe you all the way there if I can. <laughs> Thirty families have voted I. We will leave as soon as we can book passage for the new world. Piper Mackay, lead us. Let us leave this troubled land of our fathers and make a new land for our sons. Aye. Large tract of land in Pictou County, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. New Scotland. Oh, you, 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 that land yeah. is yours. Our company purchased that tract at great expense from the wild savages for you and you and you to settle. Good, arable, productive soil. Yours. A farm with as many acres as you can handle. Free! Uh, oh, free! Free! free, 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 free. free. To each and every one of you. Your own land, your own farm, all waiting for you. Oh, ah, you know that. Tell us what to do. No more ah, to ensure you survive the new world, our company hereby pledges to each and every one of you a year's supply of provisions. Free! Free! free. free. I myself will follow you to Canada on the next ship. I look forward to seeing you all then, to make certain that all is well. I'll be there to say hello and shake you warmly by the hand. I know you will have a grand voyage, and I wish you all Godspeed. God bless you, sir! Come on, now, look, wishing you coming with Highlanders. Behave like Highlanders. Families together. Uh, John McCammy. I am. And John Ross, yes. owner's agent. On behalf of Messrs. Pagan and Witherspoon, I'd like to welcome you and your uh, clan to Aleppo. No. <laughs> Have you been aboard? Examined the ship yet? Now, what do I know about ships? It's big and it has white sails. I can see that from here. <laughs> hey, hey, can you not control that lad of yours? Hey? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, put your trust in me, sir. She's a fine vessel. And I assure you that. Now I had to, I had to do it. My last farthing went on tickets for myself and my folks. Now it weren't real. It was false. A dud. The, the, the ship sailed without me. Oh, please don't call the sheriff, please. Hey, do you please. still have your ticket, McGregor? Hi. Ah, oh, well then. Will you be ruled by me, sir? What? I know how to deal with vermin like this. Leave him to me. Not to me! I can fix his hand so it will never dip into a man's pocket again. Aye, that's right. There's no need. Oh, take him away! You're a grand old fighter, aren't you, McGregor? Aye. Them savages in Canada better be warned. McGregor is coming. <laughs> 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 You ever did it a bit, didn't you? Ah. All that, please, sir, please, sir. You need to give them something strong to remember. Now, there's not one amongst them doesn't want to say. <laughs> so I'm off today, sir. Compliments to you, lady. <laughs> Have your tickets ready. No, no, don't crowd, don't crowd, it's dangerous. McGregor, McGregor, old man, you're next.
Have it failed, Duncan? Aye. Get your family aboard, Catherine. Catherine, bring the children aboard. They'll follow soon. McPhail Fergus, Aye. you'll be next. All right, Magnolia. Aye, yes. No. 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 I'll never see you again. Never again. Mother, please. Please, mother. Let go, woman. No, 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 my daughter, my life, no, no. A Piper Mackay, you're next. Take care, have your tickets ready. I can't go aboard. I don't have any funds for my voyage. I have no ticket. Well, they'll no sail without a Piper. Oh, no, 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 not without that Piper. Mr. Ross, sir, what shall we do? I'm sure gentlemen of goodwill such as you and I can always find an answer. Suppose we send him on the next ship. No, 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 no we must come to us. Well, and uh, a contribution, a small, paltry contribution from each of the other passengers would soon reach. Who is going to feed him? All passengers supply their own food. It's in the contract. I will feed him. So will I. So will I. So will I. <laughs> we'll all feed him Aye. and exchange his music for our rations. Oh, he must be allowed to come with us, to pipe us to the new land. And let him aboard, Captain. <laughs> with the compliments of the owners, Messrs. Pagan and Weatherspoon. Thank you, sir. A million thanks, And today, I'm left behind alone, tired and aged, with neither brother, nor son, nor supporter. And today, the day of my ruination, you, my daughter, the last of my children, you leave me. You and my lovely grandchildren. And today, I go back to the Glen, Without your hand to guide me, you won't come out to meet me, my dear children. No longer will I hear the gabble of your voices by the riverside. No longer will my heart leap up when I hear the dogs barking. Never again will I say, my children, are coming. <coughs> if the plague takes hold, we'll need someone. And the cut said we could point amongst ourselves. Years before a priest can join us now, you can read it. It has to be you. I'm no preacher. I'm... I've come to see for myself. Oh. Oh. Thank you, sir. That's good of you. Now, what is over here? <clears throat> Green with scum. Oh, it was fresh when we left. Six weeks ago. Anything else? <coughs> We're starving. Grown men now fight over crumbs that last week they threw away. That was imprudent. Throwing away food on an ocean voyage is unwise. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Feeding you is not part of our contract. I know, but if we could buy some food, any food from you or your men. Well, I myself have no food to spare. As to the men, well, I'll ask them. Good night, Jim. Captain! I urge you, I plead with you, nay, I beg you to reconsider your ruling about visits to the deck. There's nothing to reconsider. Passengers are not permitted on the deck at any time. We are a highland people. Your cargo. That's what you are to me. Timber, wool, passengers, all sent. 
Oh, cargo. And if the regulations applying to the black slaves of Africa were applied to us, you would not have been allowed to sail. But you are not black Africans. Would that you were. They die easier. Our nostrils have not sniffed the day for more than six weeks in heaven's name. Let us on deck for 15 minutes. No, not for 15 seconds. Passengers on the deck interfere with the efficient running of the ship. I will not have the routine of my men and myself interfered with in any way. You cannot keep us down here like pigs. Two to yourself. Our pigs had more room than this. Aye. You begged us to come on board. Save us, you said. Take us to the new world. You knew what this journey was going to be like. This is an old ship with a decaying hull. Look. It takes me all my thinking to keep her afloat, on course and under control. It's always the same with you people. First the complaints, and then the smells. The smell of your rotting food and then the stench of your rotting flesh. Cramped and crowded, are you? Well, just you wait. Wait until the fever strikes. There'll be more room then. Death creates space. With him. There is no arguing with him. He is the captain. Enough salt meat to last me this lifetime. What choice had we? What choice? None. I'd burn our homes, they put sheep on our land. So many of us. So many mouths to feed. Disease of the potatoes, the blight. Cursed by all the devils at land. And we're cursed by the devils at sea. Oh. Well, the new land will play a new tune. Right, John? Aye. <laughs> and the tartans that we cannot wear at home, we can wear there. Lord, 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 Lord. That makes us men a broadsword. That we cannot carry it home, we can carry it proudly. In Canada. Free men. Just as we wish. Living is no wish. Free with no one to say yea or nay to us. I'm sick to death of hearing yea and nay from the lips of other men. No more of it. <laughs> no more. One thing is certain, things cannot be any worse than they are. Don't be fool, woman. Things can always be worse. Feather, it's real woolly. It's very hot. Jamie, it's time I told you about the maple tree. The maple tree in, in Canada. McGregor, McGregor, come here, this. 
Come sit here down, boy. We have a tree in New Scotland, man. Unlike anything we know at home here, you chop it down and it, its logs make fine homes stronger than stone. From its leaves, pounded and treated, clothes can be made. Dainty clothes for my lady, or oh, oh, sturdy clothes for my lord. And from its box, canoes can be made. Canoes and boats and, ah, and toys for children. You make a hole in this tree and food comes out. A brown, sweet, flowing sap. Sweet, did I say? Aye, sweeter than anything your lips have ever smacked. And it's good for you. It binds the muscles together now. That's why the Canadians are stronger than we. Now you leave this magical fluid stamp for a week. It becomes oil. Oil for the lamps. Leave it stay for a year and it becomes soap. Soap? Aye, soap. Now isn't that truly magical, Jamie? If he does die, Feather, where will you bury him? You're not interested in the tree, Jamie. Nature can do all that, Feather. Where will you bury him? In the sea. In the sea? In the water? Nay, Feather, not in the sea, not me. Think about the maple tree, Jamie. The promised land to come. Willie? Willie, Willie. Don't die, Willie. If you die, they'll put you in the water. For as much as it hath pleased, Almighty God, of his great mercy, to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the deep, to be turned into corruption, looking for the resurrection of the body, when the sea shall give up her dead and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man that is born of woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one state. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins no, are justly Jamie. displeased. No! Jamie, don't die. Please don't. Please, please, I don't want to be put in the water. A rat! A rat! Quills! Quills! It's not funny! It's not funny that goddamn Thurman can feed us for a week! Forgive me, Lord. There he goes! Oh, no. It's not no. funny! It's not funny! It's not funny! It's not 
Listen. Listen. Fresh water, Jamie. Fresh from heaven. Oh, no, you need a Your people are going mad. Aye, mad. With God's blessing. My men are refusing orders. No, we shall live to see Canada. It's God's will. This storm will put two weeks on our voyage. Is that also God's will? I cannot control this ship with your pack swarming about the decks. Order them below. They listen to you. Allow us on deck each day. Never. Then we might as well drown in this gale. I want your highland scum off my decks. Children twice a day. You want your ship. I want my people to live. Come on, man. I'll come away there. Hey! You've been fooled, haven't you? Duped. There's no farm waiting for you in Canada, no free provisions. You've been fooled. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe we wanted to be fooled. If I was God, I wouldn't want you in the new world. <laughs> Come. You have a good repast this noontime. Meat and cakes. We are starving whilst you eat. It's time for us to avail ourselves of your food. Right! No, 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 the captain, the crew. Let them keep their food. They'll need their strength to bring us to port. Leave them. Go fetch some more fresh water. Right! Fifteen minutes, just fifteen minutes on deck each day. You agree? Give us a few minutes more. Then I'll get them below. Well, I'll not say thank you. I'll not expect you to. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie. Forgive me, Jamie. Forgive me for putting you in the water. Me too. The scourge has taken 18. All of them children. I am old, very old, but God must be getting older. He doesn't know who's supposed to die anymore. He's taking the bairns, leaving the old behind. Maple tree. The maple tree. Maple trees. Hark! So many trees. Spouting right down to the water's edge. Trees, the farmer's enemy. Canada. That's right, Christmas. My team. Piper Mackay! Piper Mackay, you will pipe us ashore!
and the more even each log is in size, the better for your dwelling. Now use clay or mud to pack between each log, like this. You'll soon get the hang of it. It's November now. Cold, much fiercer than we know. By Christmas, the snow will be higher than your head. That is why you must get these cabins built soon. So be of good cheer. People of resource like yourselves will survive no matter how fierce the weather. Remember, we are 80 miles away at Truro. Quite a sizable settlement now, though we too started just as you are starting. We have a large community, military post, stores with ample provisions from which you can make purchases if need be. Hmm, we have no funds. Ah, your agent, uh, Mr. Ross, who brought you here, has arrived from the Philadelphia Company. I'm sure he will extend you credit. You sent us word, no credit. He's too ashamed to face us for the lies he told us about free farms and food. Ah, yes. Well then, uh, be not afraid of the savages, the Indians around you, but learn from them. They will show you how to make canoes from birch trees and shoes that will walk on snow. General! General! Yeah, Captain. Oh, yes. The maple tree that gives all things all men. The sweet syrup of the maple flows in the early spring. You will have to wait until then. Trees like men are sweeter than young. <laughs> yes, sir. Good day to you. The ground is too hard to break. Too hard to plant or farm this year. He was right. You must learn to fish the locks and streams. Hack clams and oysters from the ice. Take the wild fruits from the fields. Survive by hunting animals. The meat will feed us the furs clothe us. Then the woods are filled with our food and our clothing, our pantry and our loom. Aye, but soon the beasts will go to ground, hibernate against the cold. And we will feel the pangs of hunger again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It's McCann, eh? What's happened to you, man? An empty stomach soon as an empty face. Sit down, man. Thank you, but no. I've walked from Pitu to here. That's 80 miles. I'm on shoes of snow, the Indians back. I've come to talk to you, not to sit. People are hungry. The bairns cry at night, their stomachs swollen with emptiness. We need food. I've been sent to ask you to beg you for credit. I can't. It's against company regulations. Of course. If it were up to me, I'd do it. You know that. You know me. Aye. I know you. Of course, if you had something to sell, Trinkets or valuables? Well, our valuables were sold to raise money to pay for a passage here. You're prudent. You should have kept some for food. The first winters here are always the hardest. I have something to sell. Our clothes off our bodies. I <laughs> know ah, people like you always can find something to sell. Broad slots, tartans. You expect to sell these? Trousers and jackets are worth more. However, I'll be generous. I'll give you a potato for each of those. Three for the jackets. Believe me, man, it's more than they're worth.
you wait would feed me. Father, it's more than you can do. The Wilsons will take me. Either me or Margaret. Your father will never allow it. I've just been to see the Wilsons. You know, with the big house and proper rooms near the shore. They've been here six or seven years. Do you know who I mean? They want some help. They have a big house, and they need someone young like me to be a, a bonded servant. You would denture yourself to the Wilsons. I feel a slave. I would eat. A slave. A slave. Maybe I could get some food for you. No son of mine of my blood could ever conceive the world. It is not a word to me! It is a black monster with four sharp claws tearing at the inside of my gut! It's been there ever since the sheep came to our highland croft. It grows stronger. I grow weaker. If I do not eat soon, Father, I will die. We will all die. McCamney. How nice to see you again. And this time with Mr. Uh... MacDonnell. McGregor. And how are you all? We want food. Salt, meat, meal, barley, corn, potatoes in order to survive this winter. Grain and seed for the spring. You have money, of course. We will give you a note each man will sign, promising to honor his debt and repay your note next spring. You know I cannot do that. Stand to one side. No. Run mad. All of you, mad! To one side. Your men must come quickly. The Highlanders from Pictou have gone berserk. Raiding, looting a stall. 
You must stop them. My trick, I believe. Sir! Order your men out! Sir, I am in command here. I know these Highlanders. Treated fairly, they respond fairly. Abused as they are by some, lied to as they were by you. They will stand so much, then they rouse to action. But once roused, they are best not interrupted. Are these cards ready for play? They are robbing me of my goods while you play cards! Wrong on both counts. They are removing your goods. And I am restrained from playing cards by your constant interruptions. Deal the cards. I think you will find they are neither brigands nor robbers. MacDonald, check his list. Is that everything you either ate or took possession of from the store? Correct. Down to the last prune. Then sign it. I will not. Each man agreed to sign a note of indebtedness from what he, for what he's taken from the store tonight. I know. I cannot write. <laughs> <laughs> then make your X. Ah, Mr. Ross. Each man has signed, showing his willingness to pay. Every morsel taken from these premises is listed here. We left the place as orderly as we found it. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Good night, Mr. Ross. See you in the spring. And I will see you in hell for this! A militia! The law will hound you! You pay for this! <laughs> All of you, you pay. I'll see you all hanged. When I tell the colonial governor. Johnson. Have you come to arrest me and the others? If I were going to arrest you, I wouldn't have waited all these months. <laughs> no, I refuse to march against you. And when I put it to my men, they also refuse to march. How have you managed? How have you lived through the winter? Oh, we have survived, that's all that can be said. But there are only some 70 of us left here now. That cannot be. There were more than 200 landed here last October. Many died. Some went mad. Many fled to other settlements or sold themselves to servitude. Seventy-eight are left now. Colonel! Colonel! Captain! Ah, ah, yes! The Indians have shown me how to tackle the sweet sap out of the maple tree. It's not soap. It's not oil. Not the most wondrous tree in the world. But this fluid is very tasty. It's delicious. <laughs> we're oat cakes. Uh, some conversation. <laughs> Welcome to Canada, Mr. McGregor. Thank you, Captain. Oh. <laughs> the ice is breaking. The ground softening. Spring. We shall plant, sow, harvest. And we shall pay back our debts to Mr. Ross and the store in full. This is a good land. We shall be good to it. And it will be bountiful to us. That year, the colony of Pictou produced 171 bushels of wheat, 13 bushels of rye, 56 bushels of peas, 38 of barley, 100 of oats, 340 pounds of flax, and 1,700 feet of board timber, as well as purchasing 13 oxen, 13 cows, 15 young cattle, 25 sheep, and one pig. And they repaid their debt to the company store in full. The ship they sailed on was called the Hector. The year was 1773. 
and a story is part of the history of Canada.